Well, good morning, everybody. Thanks so much for coming, and it's just amazing to see you all here from so many different places. We're very excited to have you. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Tracy Bretag, and I'm the project leader for this ALTC project. Before we begin, and Colin has just so kindly reminded me, we want to acknowledge that we're standing on Ghana land and thank the original custodians for taking such good care of the land for us. Um, so thank you for coming from so far and so wide. We have DVCAs and directors of teaching and learning. We've got professors and teaching academics and researchers. We've got learning advisors. We have policy makers and senior administrators. And I'm so grateful that all of you were willing to be on our reference group when I asked you a couple of years ago, so long ago it seems now, when we first talked about getting this project up. I especially want to thank uh, two people who've come internationally, Tricia Bertram Gallant, who's come all the way from San Diego. She's here and we are just using that poor woman up. Uh, she is going everywhere doing seminars for us about the Ethical Academy. She's done a wonderful one for us here at UniSA. She'll be going to La Trobe next week and then to Griffith University. So thanks, Tricia. And also Anna Weatherstone for coming away from New Zealand. Thanks so much. Uh, we love to have as many partners as we, ha as we could. We've got lots of other people, international uh, members of the reference group. Luckily, we were able to meet with them at 5 APSA. So I think we've covered most of the people in the reference group now. Um, I'd like also if I could ask our project team to all stand up so that I can introduce you as well. We have Margaret Wallace over here from the University of Wollongong, Julianne East from La Trobe, Ruth Walker from uh, University of Wollongong, Sadia Mahmoud, the most efficient, competent project manager you could ever have. I think you'll agree with me. You've had lots of correspondence from her. And look, we're all here. We all made it. Um, over there we have Ursula McGowan from the University of Adelaide down the road, Colin James from the University of Newcastle, Margaret Green, who is a UniSA staff member, recently retired and has come back from New Zealand for this colloquium, and Lee Partridge from the University of Western Australia. Thanks, guys. You will see and hear from all of our project team members today. They're going to lead a session, as you can see, on your agenda. We do have some good news in that our project was due to finish in June, and we were a little bit stressed about that. We were thinking, we're just meeting you guys here in February. How are we going to get this all together? Luckily, we have a six-month extension, so we'll be submitting everything to the ALTC or DWA or whoever's taking it in December. Um, so we have that bit of extra time, and hopefully that'll give us enough time to analyse the data that we have adequately, and we'll talk a lot about the data we have today, and also refine these deliverables. We want to actually have real practical outcomes from our research. So what we're hoping to achieve today, just to fulfil the project's brief, is you know, we're hoping to at least begin the, the discussion and develop a shared understanding of academic integrity. We have 17 universities represented in the room, so we're hoping by doing that you'll take those ideas and understandings back to your institution. Um, we're going to have an opportunity to refine the, ex the exemplar deliverables that we've got as a draft in here. Um, we hope we have some real practical outcomes. And m perhaps most importantly, we want an opportunity for all of you to collaborate with us and with each other so you can share ideas on best practice. So I thought I might just spend about 15 to 20 minutes giving you a very brief overview of the project so far. Um, all of you have had the material sent. I know we have inundated you with information over the last year. We send you newsletters. We, every time we have a paper published, we're like, yay, everybody. Um, whether you have read all that, we didn't expect you to necessarily. We just want to share our, our good news with you. So we thought we would start by just giving you a very quick overview. So we've talked about the team, and you know that we have six universities represented. I'm going to talk quickly about the research questions and the process, the results of um, our stage one and the papers that we've um, published since then. Uh, from our policy analysis, including the five core elements of exemplary policy. Um, we'll talk about some of the prelim preliminary results we've got and talk a little bit about where to next, but it will be very, very quick. We've talked about the universities that are being involved. We started talking about this. What you may not be aware of um, is that all of the project team members are part of the Asia Pacific Forum on Educational Integrity, and we've put a little postcard in your folder. Hopefully, if you are not already a member, of APFA, please encourage your institution to join. I think most of you are, in fact. Please spread the word. Um, but we had been, as members of APFA, for some time discussing the inconsistencies that we perceive between academic integrity policies in Australian universities, everywhere, not just any one particular, and the way it was implemented. We chatted a lot about this, and then we actually had the impetus to start thinking more creatively because Julianne East had a paper published talking exactly about that. 
So following Julianne's paper and some further discussions and, a, and an initial unsuccessful application to the ALTC in 2010, we were successful on the project Academic Integrity Standards Aligning Policy and Practice. I would like to go forward. Yeah. This comes, we've extended some of Julianne's ideas and come up with, with really this sort of theoretical framework uh, for our project. This was in our um, proposal. Um, you can see at the centre of all of our thinking is the idea of developing and inculcating a culture of academic integrity. We're interested in policy, we're interested in teaching and learning. We think that the review of policy and process is very important and we're also interested in academic integrity breach outcomes and decision making. But we maintain throughout the whole process that unless you are working towards developing a culture of academic integrity from the top down, from the bottom up and at every level, these other things are not going to work well. So we had four stages in our project. We wanted to look at the policy and procedures for academic integrity from all the universities around Australia. We wanted to look at responses to academic integrity breaches. We wanted to look at good practice in aligning policy with teaching and learning. And finally, and really the most important thing throughout that whole thing, was how do you really foster a culture of academic integrity? And that's really where we're going to be hopefully going today. We did some policy data collection and analysis. Um, we went to the 39 universities and collected their online academic integrity policies and analysed them as a team over a period of months. That took some time and that's the, you've probably all read the paper um, where we talked about that analysis of that policy. I'll talk about breach data collection in a little while. Um, it hasn't quite gone as we thought. It's actually very complicated to collect breach data as probably as we knew before we did the, the uh, proposal. But we did have the support of our DVCAs at each of the universities, so we thought we'd still be able to collect it, and we could in theory. The data's not comparable. It's actually very hard to make any real sense of it and have anything you know, meaningful to say. So um, my colleagues, uh, Margaret Green and Margaret Wallace, are going to talk later in the day about what we're proposing to do instead of that breach data collection. But we think we're coming up with something a little bit more conceptual and perhaps even more useful. We've conducted interviews quite a lot, about 30, and about uh, with senior stakeholders in all the universities, DVCAs, directors teaching and learning, um, academic integrity officers and um, teaching academics. We've also run about the same number of focus groups with other stakeholder groups, including undergraduate, postgraduate, coursework, international students, and we've tried to get their perspective, as well as other academics on the ground, including learning advisors, librarians, course coordinators, lecturers. And we've run a student survey, which I'll talk a little bit about today. Uh, we're now in the process of trying to draft some, we're using the word exemplars, it sounds very fancy, doesn't it? What we really mean is some practical resources that we hope are, you know, are informed by the research. And then of course the last stage is about once we've done that, how we disseminate. Very, very important. So in brief, you can see there, we, we analysed the top 39, we got down to a short list of 12, then we used a five point scale between us, we've had teleconferences, we've had too many emails to count, where we all tried to work out the strengths and weaknesses of various policies. Um, we then reviewed them again uh, many, many times. We, if there were discrepancies, we went back again. And in the end, we identified six exemplary policies. I'm not going to tell you what those are today. Uh, we're still in the process of thinking about how we most meaningfully convey that message without suggesting that other policies are not good as well, because there are elements of good policy everywhere. Uh, and none of the six exemplary policies were, in fact, perfect. They just had more elements that we thought were, were good. Um, and then from that we identified what we call our five core elements of exemplary policy. We used a whole bunch of categories to do that. We looked at things like ease of access, how academic integrity was defined, the purpose of the policy, the approach. And that was, of course, given our theoretical framework, which puts a culture of academic integrity at the centre. That was very important to us. That's one of the big key findings for us through our analysis of policy and through the student survey data, through our interviews and our focus groups. What approach does the university say they take? How do they convey that to stakeholders and do they really follow that approach? Is it an, in, one of integrity? Is it educational? Is it punitive? And how do they match? We looked at who was taking responsibility for academic integrity within the institution. We looked at issues like are student, uh, students in this case